Hello boys and girls, this is your old friend RJ City, and today we will be unboxing Gargoyles Series 2 trading cards. And for those of you who do not know, Gargoyles was a cartoon, I guess, in the 90s, but it was like Shakespeare. It was like Game of Thrones. It would be so serious and heavy that you would finish what I'd be like 11 years old, and I'd be finished drinking my chocolate milk, and I'd be like, ugh. Did you see that? Oh my god. It was so dark and gritty. And the main guy was so, like, Batman-y. Like, tortured by his own sense of justice. And there was like, oh, these strings, big scores. And you'd go to Scotland. And then you would go back to New York. And oh, everything. Oh, the parallels. Well, let's not waste any more time. This is uh, Series 2 trading cards. Four regular cards. Plus one Shadow Fighter card per pack. Look at, look at this guy's serious, and then this guy's serious. These are from Fleer, uh, Mount Laurel, New Jersey. I haven't been to the Mount. I've been to the Lowlands, but not quite the Mount. Odds of finding Shadow Finder card, approximately the ratio is one to one in the packs. Odds of finding a static glow card, approximately one in nine. Stated odds reflect the average of entire production run. This is no guaranteed number of bonus cards per box or case. No substitutions will be allowed. So this may be price. Maybe we'll get a, a static glow card. Who knows? Let us... We got three uh, packs here. So let's open the first one. Oh, this is an adorable creature. And his name is Brooklyn? Yeah, that's it. Because New York is, you know, whatever. You get it. Here is uh, there's too much glare here. Oh, there you go. There's Brooklyn. You get the gist there. Uh, jalapeno. It's a miracle. I guess that was uh, Brooklyn's catchphrase. There's him on the back there, hanging out, having a time. He's, of course, a gargoyle. The thrill seeker of the trio. Brooklyn likes to meet adventure head on at full speed. Sometimes he leaps before he looks, but fast reflexes and growing street smart since they're not familiar with the streets and the help of good friends keep him safe this is brooklyn and of course he has a cousin named staten island but nobody talks to him and next oh this is this is thalog Thal thalog is this the main uh, whatever i don't know how to i gotta start watching this again this is a show that deserves a reboot and a full movie and i feel like jordan peele was like let me do one and then it frightened executive for some reason that's thalog his quote is you've created a monster me and i've certainly said that to my therapist before a clone of goliath oh okay because thalog is goliath backwards nice um theft of the bizarro superman a clone of goliath grown in xanatos labs thalog is a dark evil version of his genetic original of course, the original is <laughs> Goliath is just dark. Uh, clever enough to outsmart Xanatos, Thalog is now on the loose enemy of all, friend to no one. Kind of a bad news brown of the uh, Gargoyles universe. And you, you, know, you know he's different because he's got white hair instead of black and red eyes. That was just, they just had, it was a nice way to save money. The animation budget. Oh, we got ourselves a battle card. Oh, this is exciting. City of Stone, part four. We all remember parts one, two, and three. And they're fighting here. Let's see what the hell this is. Betraying Macbeth in the 11th century. See how they dovetail with the Shakespeare? D Demona learns the terrible price of her covenant with him, but in the present, Macbeth must be talked out of killing her in order to save the gargoyles and... The city. It's not just about saving the gargoyles. I think they're really allegories for justice. These two are about to fight. Things are going to go down. Is this the... Oh, no. Hold on. This is the last normal card. Good versus evil, it says. Oh, there's a trouble. There's a foot here. And this is a normal human guy. And this portly gargoyle. It looks like he's going to beat the shit out of him. This is Dracon, the human guy, and Broadway. He's Broadway loves to sing 
the lullaby of Broadway. And he goes, that's me. And he always brings his tap shoes. Uh, Dragon wants to use the gargoyles for his own dirty dealing, of course. Anytime you have strong creatures, there's always people who want to weaponize them. Like the military. Broadway isn't going to let him get away with terrorizing the city. Especially when there's so many songs to sing. Dragon's occupation is a mob boss. I guess that's what it says on his business card. And when he fills out his tax information, his strategy is not playing by the rules. Although, he definitely does play by the rules of being a mob boss. Very by the book in that regard. Uh, Broadway's uh, feature, I guess his special strength, his intangible, is 10 tons of force. I don't know how they measured it. Got him to sit still and measured it. His strategy, it says, is... is I'm going to show you this because I can't believe it. Smashing bad guys. Can we... Are we blurry? You, be, you believe me. Whatever. So that uh, sounds like an exciting fella. And here is the Shadow Fighter. And they just embossed... Oh, I guess you can cut them... Oh, I see. I thought it was embossed, but it's like... Uh, perforated perforated you can like punch them out and i really don't want to and you will just it's just a silhouette again really saving the budget here making the most of creativity this is of hudson um it's his directions pop out figure turn on the flashlight turn off the light stand by wall point flashlight at card to cast Shadow. Oh, the car can also be used as a stencil. So you would pop it out, and then you'd have a flashlight, and you'd shine it, and you'd say, oh, look, there's Hudson. I and mean, you can also do that here. So you can see that the Shadow Fighter cards were probably not the hottest, hottest ticket at Christmas. Let's open the second pack here, pack two of three. Same series, same routine. You got the gist. First card is... Who is this? I can't even see. Angela, which is, of course, and there's wonderful crossover, is she became um, Tony Danza's boss and Who's the Boss. I guess she was voiced by Judith Light. She does have a Judith Light love. Gargoyles made of stone. They're in the city and gothic and tortured and dark, but they have this, she found a sensible pair of earrings, perhaps at TJ Maxx or Marshalls. Who knows? This place is certainly full of surprises. So she's... Just happy to be in the city. A city gal, burgeoning city gal. Raised on the mystical island of Avalon, Angela is only now exploring the world of her mother, Demona, and her father, Goliath. So Demona and Goliath smashed to stones. And out came Angela. Inquisitive, brave, yet somewhat naive, aren't we all? Angela is on a journey of discovery of herself, her clan's history, and her ultimate destiny. I would not mind seeing a spin-off series of Angela in high school, kind of like Mean Girls meets Gargoyles. I think that would be a lot of fun. Who is this guy? Jackal? There's always, I feel like every cartoon, if there's enough supervillains, if it goes long, if it goes past one season, the second season will always have a guy named Jackal. And look at this guy. Something wrong with his eyes. Maybe he just had cataract surgery certainly got a mullet or just just my haircut maybe i'm jackal uh well this is his catchphrase well that's sicker than usual i guess he was a doctor he was a pediatrician at one point and he was always surprised oh you're healthy and then they take the temperature and they're ah. a sociopath with a twisted sense of humor he's funny jackal is the twin brother of hyena no shit he gladly allowed Xanatos to upgrade him to a cyborg with the ability to telescope his body and turn his fingers into deadly knives. I think I would take that upgrade. What is the trade-off, though? Do I have to sell this guy my soul? Do I have to pay him? I wouldn't pay for it. They did it for free? Absolutely. Are you kidding me? It's like Botox, perhaps. Ah, uh, something in my... I'm fine. Oh, this is a battle card. Here we go. Another battle card. And they're falling. Is this... This is Broadway again. And he's falling. But he's helping because he's a nice guy. He wants to hurt you, but doesn't want to kill you. The Silver Falcon. When he leases partner Matt Bluestone... Dis I guess he's a magician. Disappears while investigating the mysterious Illuminati Society. The, motherfucking the Illuminati are in this children's cartoon. That's some heavy 
This was back in the day where Illuminati was like a mystical thing, not something that your aunt posts about on Facebook. Elisa and Broadway charged to the rescue, battling crime bosses to solve a 70-year-old mystery. This is like Murder, She Wrote, perhaps. There's so much going on in the show. It really deserves a rewatch and a a new appreciation. I know there's fans out there, but there really should be more. Another battle card, lucky me. This fella's just shooting. High noon, it says, and he certainly looks like he's had some sort of marijuana cigarette with those red eyes. When Coldstone, there's Bluestone and Coldstone. This is how old this is. This is before the creamery. Now you name somebody Coldstone in a card, they laugh at you. Coldstone is reactivated by Macbeth and Demona. He was, I guess, a gargoyle android laying dormant. The gargoyles fly to his rescue, but they suffer a crushing defeat, and Elisa must battle Demona to save them. Ah, we all remember that one. That was a a hard blow for everyone. Uh, And here we have another shadow fighter, and I believe this is Goliath. So I'd punch him out and go, whoa, look, Goliath is walking. That's fun. Why don't you just give me them with the holes in them? Well, I guess then you get the shadow, be a little action figure There were gargoyle action figures, and I had them. They weren't very functional. They didn't really figure out how to do the wings. All right, let's open the final, final pack. Will this open? That's the real mystery here, is that will these open? This is a, an embarrassing display, quite frankly. We'll get it. Let's summon the strength of the gargoyles. Oh, it is, it's open, but I can't get the... Like, the hole is open, but it's so tight. Clip that out. Um. Okay, here we go. That's better. It's open now. And let's get to the final... Oh, my God. Is this a special hard-to-open pack? One in 18. Okay, here we go. This is... A gentleman named Glasses. And I wonder why. I mean, she's the only guy who wears glasses in the Gargoyle universe. The competition is being eliminated. This is a guy who has a very deep voice. As Anthony Dracone's right-hand man, Glasses, enjoys doing the dirty work. Why do they call him dirty? From intimidating dirty glasses... From intimidating local businessmen to selling illegal guns on the street. See, this show got very political. A man who admires his ruthless boss, Glasses is loyal, obedient, and dangerous. And has decent eyesight when driving at night. So, very useful for illicit activities. And this is uh, Themagus? Themagus? The Magus? The Magus. How many Maguses? There's only one. He's so white, you can't even see his... There we go. The Magus. Whatever. Until the castle rises above the clouds. It's not a full sentence, and they shouldn't put it as a quote. The Magus's unspoken love for Princess Catherine centuries ago compelled him to curse the gargoyles with the spell that caused them to sleep as stone statues until the castle rises above the clouds. This is the guy that started it all. He later repented, however, and helped transport gargoyle eggs away from the cursed castle Wyvern, which, of course, was named by Jerry Lewis. It's a big stone Jerry statue going, oh, Wyvern. That's the guy who started it all. Battle card. This guy looks scared shitless. This is a guy who is not anticipating supernatural activity, but yet he's now you know, it's thrust upon him. That's a shame. City of Stone, part three. Using steel clan robots, Xanatos and the gargoyles must make the sky burn, quote unquote, to end Demona's spell. Meanwhile, in a flashback to the 11th century Scotland, this was like watching Lost. You would go back and forth and be totally confused. Macbeth and Demona strike a magical bargain aided by the Weird Sisters. That is their formal, capitalized name, the Weird Sisters. I wonder what they were like. 
We've all encountered a pair of weird sisters before. Here's a battle card. Uh-oh. Look at it. Look at this titanic struggle. Irresistible force, a movable object, and there are also gargoyles. This is the cage. Goliath kidnaps Dr. Severius. Remember that song? Dr. Severius, Dr. Severius, Dr. Severius. To force him to cure the mutates. We're stealing all from X-Men here. But Talon, believing Goliath to be his ebony, ebony, Talon, believing Goliath to be his enemy, swears vengeance. The ensuing clash between the gargoyles and mutates proves Xanatos' dirty dealing once and for all. See, these guys are just up to no good. He's instigated a war. You see, he's one of those guys who said, no, fight him. This is a good idea. And here's another shadow fighter, and I believe that this is Brooklyn. And see how much I've learned about the gargoyles? And you pop them out, and you go, hey, buddy, you want to get in a cab? Where to? And he, of course, had a daughter named Bushwick, who's so fucking hip. Anyway, that was three packs of Gargoyles Series 2. And I urge you to watch that show. And then come back here again once the sun rises above the clouds or whatever the fuck he said. Mm-hmm.